Welcome back to Street Explain for a brand new episode on Binder Jetting. As suggested by its name, binder jetting uses a binding agent to form 3D objects. This 3D printing technology was created in the 1990s at the MIT. Going into more details, binder jetting machines use a similar process to SLS, but instead of melting the powder, the particles are bound together by a jetted binder, which is a kind of glue. Because the powder isn't melted during the printing process, binder jetting can be used with other materials than just thermoplastics. Such materials include sand, metals, ceramics, and polymers. Binder jetting is considered the OG 3D printing process. In some ways, it is very similar to 2D paper printing, or at least inkjet. It actually uses slightly modified inject heads to project the binding agent onto the powder. You can think of it as regular inject printing, but the printer is also combining the stacked layers together, thus building a 3D object. Binder jetting is more cost-effective than SLS, SLM and other PBF processes, but its final mechanical properties are slightly weaker, as the powder particles aren't actually fused together. You can think of it as the difference between soldering and welding. When soldering, you glue the metals thanks to the solder, whereas with welding, you're actually melting the metals and fusing them together. Another advantage of binder jetting is its improved dimensional accuracy compared to PBF. Since there is no differential cooling, so some shrinkage can occur during the infiltration or the sintering process. Furthermore, all the unused powder can be recycled because it hasn't been affected by the printing. By using multiple print heads containing different colored binders, a binder jetting printer is able to achieve multi-colored prints. Some binder jetted parts can be used as such, straight out of the printer, but some others have to be post-cured or sintered before final use. Those post-processing steps can be critical to ensure better mechanical properties of the printed object. Another post-processing method is to infiltrate the printed object with a fluid to strengthen it. For polymers, the preferred infiltrate liquid is epoxy. For ceramics, it's cyanoacrylate, and for metals, it's bronze. As with all powders, please keep your materials as dry as possible as they will absorb humidity out of the air and get moist pretty quick. The powder material consists of very fine particles. Wear a mask when handling. What do you think of binder jetting? And what materials would you like to experiment with using one of these machines? Share your thoughts in the comments. See you soon on 3D Explained.